Hey there, YouTubers. It's Don from True Cable coming back at you again. Well, uh, today we're going to talk about terminating unshielded pass-through RJ45 plugs onto Ethernet cable. And we're going to be demonstrating all of our latest tools. So grab a cup of coffee. We're going to get real knee-deep in this whole thing. So stay tuned. Here we go. Okay, well, before we get into the actual termination part here, uh, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about the tools you're going to need. Uh, the absolutes that you have to have are, you have to have flush cutters. This is to prepare your Ethernet cable for termination. You're going to need a termination tool, and here is our all-in-one termination tool. Now, two very important items that will save your sanity and hands are a glove and a smooth metal dowel, such as this. Uh, also, a screwdriver shaft can be substituted. Um, the reason is you're going to use this to easily comb out the kinks out of the conductors, which is going to save your thumb quite a bit. Okay, so with the tools out of the way, let's go ahead and get some plugs on. We're going to be using Category 6A riser unshielded cable. We're going to be using a Category 6-6A unshielded pass-through plug. And as a bonus, we're going to use a uh, slip-on uh, boot for adding some additional strain relief. The first thing you're gonna do uh, is you have to slide the strain relief boot down first. No matter what variation you're working with, this has to go first. So we use our medium slip-on boot for this particular Cat 6A riser unshielded cable, and it slides down relatively easily. Just get it out of your way for the time being. It will come back to it later. And then the next step is you wanna actually strip off about two inches of cable jacket. So uh, we're gonna put it into our stripper here, about two inches through there, close the handle all the way, and then we're gonna turn the tool just one time around this cable jacket. Lock it up. And the idea is to put a score on the cable jacket that you actually have to pop like so. See how that just popped? There we go. Now, by having that score on there and having to pop it, you know for a fact you didn't accidentally nick a conductor. And nicked conductors show up right at the jacket edge and they're usually a slice in the insulation or you can actually see glinting copper. If you've got a nicked conductor, cut this thing right back off and start over. You've got a bad termination. Uh, but if you suspect you nicked a conductor but you're not sure, you can take the conductors and just do one of these guys. Just bend them mildly at the jacket edge and look to see if you can see a nick right here or maybe some glinting copper. So that's one way. And, and you know, because just because you sliced through the cable jacket doesn't mean you nicked a conductor. It just means you got a good possibility it happened. The next step is you're going to want to flush cut off the ripcord. All right, so the next step is we need to get rid of the spline on the cable. Take your conductors and move them out of the way because you've got each wing you're going after here. Take your clippers and rest them at the cable jacket edge or as close as you can get, and then cut at a slight downward angle towards the center of the spline, and you're gonna do that four times. Okay, so once you've got each wing uh, snipped, just simply twist and it comes right off. Make sure you didn't accidentally nick a conductor in the process of doing that, and I didn't. All right, so the next step in this whole thing is to actually untwist those conductors. And remember that piece of cable jacket you stripped off? Well, that's a free tool for a little bit. So start the untwisting of the conductors with your fingers first, and get each one of these pairs ready to go. All right, and then you're gonna use your tool here, your little free uh, tool, and put it on one of the wires and just simply make a twisting motion downward towards the jacket. All right, so when you've got these guys all untwisted, it's important to make sure that there's no binding up going on down here at this cable jacket edge. For example, you still have two conductors that are a bit laid on top of each other like this. Just simply move one so that they're next to each other. 
and that will help minimize any binding that that's going on. Here's an example of another one right there, just like that. All right, now it's all ready to start combing out these kinks. If you're doing enough of these all day, if you're not wearing a glove and using this dowel, you're going to regret it because you're going to end up with blood blisters. So starting at the cable jacket edge and doing a couple three passes to the top of the or the end of the conductor, you're going to remove the kinks. Run the conductor between the metal rod and your gloved uh, thumb here. Don't use so much pressure, though, that you actually take insulation right off the copper. That's no good. For Cat5e, uh, one pass is usually enough because those are thin conductors. For Cat6 or Cat6a, it's usually uh, two or three. Okay, so we got them all straightened out. They're looking pretty good. Now, you, now you're ready to start uh, getting this into an order and getting it into a plug, etc. You do have to put the conductors into a certain sequence. Those sequences are defined by ANSI TIA is either T568A or T568B. Uh, basically, the difference is, is where the orange and green pairs are. Uh, they're both straight through strategies, so make sure that you're using the same color code at both ends of your cable. Do not use A at one end and B at the other and expect it to work because it, it may well not. So white orange and then orange is right next to it. And then white green is the next conductor. And then blue, then white blue, then green, which does cross over some then white brown and brown. And it was easy to get into that order because I kept everything all good and lined up down here and not crossed over. Then skip about an inch and a half up the conductors here and get a nice little spot that looks like a good spot to flush cut. A good spot to flush cut is where you don't have a ton of kink still. Now there might be some kinks out here, which is why we're not gonna try to do it there. We're gonna do it right here. Get all eight at once. See how they're nice and even now? That's important when putting on a plug. All right, so again, why I like to start from the white orange at the top and the brown at the bottom. When I reference a plug, I'm going to point the golden contacts this way, the cable's pointing this way, and I'm looking at the bottom of the plug. In other words, the side of the plug that does not have this plastic latch. So the white orange conductor should go at the top and the brown should end up at the bottom. Now you can see why I've kind of developed a very uh, orderly system. It just helps keep things all nice and organized. All right, so don't quite seat your plug on fully yet. Uh, what you're going to want to do is reconfirm that these conductors did not cross over while putting on the plug, and they're still correct. So now you can continue seating the cable jacket, and you may need to pinch it a little bit to get it to go in there. All right, so how far in should you seat this guy? Well. As it turns out, and just push and pull until you get it to the point where you want it to go. All right, so what we have right here is what's known as a standard half inch termination. So from the end of the cable jacket right there to the end of the golden contacts, you've got a half an inch of untwist. That is a standard termination. It's the maximum amount of, a maximum amount of untwist you can have. However, this particular plug design allows you to get a little more performance or headroom out of the cable. So what I will do is I will usually eh, go halfway. I'm not looking to jam a, uh, the cable jacket all the way up here, which I could if I really wanted to, but a little more trouble than I want right now. All right, so there we go. It's about, it's actually a little more than an eighth of an inch past the, uh, the minimum, and it's a good termination. The conductors are all lined up and now it's ready to actually be terminated. And that's where we get out our all-in-one crimp tool here, unlock it, and the latch side goes up towards the top of the tool and ramp your conductors up just a, a little bit like so. The reason being that it has to clear, they have to clear this flush cut blade and it's easy to run those conductors right into that flush cut blade. So what I'll do is go in like this so the conductors come through really, you know, kind of push it in there to make sure it's fully seated. But you don't need to use a lot of pressure to keep it there. 
just make sure it's fully seated, start to close the handle, take your hand off the cable because the strain latch presser bar is now going into the rear of the plug and it's locked the plug in there. So just simply push the rest of the way down, open your tool, lock it, and now you've got a termination. The, the way you check your work on these guys is you've got all the conductors that are flush cut off and all eight golden contacts are fully seated. We have success. And I know it's a good termination because we didn't nick a conductor and because the cable jacket is pretty far up there. So we have a perfectly good termination. One step left though. Uh, that is the strain relief boot that we were talking about earlier. Okay, so the way you put the strain relief boot on is slightly to press your latch here and then just simply press this guy up until it snaps into place. And there it goes. I mean, it may not make a physical snap noise, but you might uh, feel it. And so this rubber here will go over the lip uh, on the hard plastic of the plug. And there you go. You've got a beautiful looking uh, termination now. Now the main thing here is that that strain relief boot is going to help remind you of just how much you can bend that cable whenever you're plugging it in. And it's going to, and if you do bend it like that, it's going to help take a lot of pressure off of those golden contacts, which is very critical uh, to maintaining good performance on your cable. So if you have any questions, please, uh, let us know in the comments, and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, a thumbs down. Subscribe to our channel, and I really hope you found this useful. You have a great day. Happy networking.